to give us the direction to make a presentation to us and the minister will lead the team will will tell us how they have planned and proposed to 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 to, to make their presentation to us i propose that uh, for, for 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 all of this must take the department at least uh, 45 minutes if you can honorable minister or so uh, so that we we have more time uh, allocated to members of parliament to engage with uh, the presentation uh, that is before us. The presentation was received uh, long beforehand and I, I hope that members have found time to familiarize themselves with the contents and really prepare quite meaningfully uh, for this particular meeting. Uh, with that, over to you, Honorable Minister, or before that, any other apology that uh, might have came and I've not recorded it. But all yes. apologies must via me, uh, notwithstanding that. Uh, any apology that uh, is there? I Chair. doubt there is. Sorry, yes. Chairperson, I think you, you said an apology from Honorable Ndongeni. I think you meant Honorable Maleka. Oh, uh, yes, Maleka, Maleka. Yeah, yes. yeah, Chair, but also to, to, to note that uh, I have to leave the meeting by half past 11. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, you, yeah. okay. Thanks. No, yeah, my okay. name is, I'm the Deputy Minister, Chair, uh, Chair. I, I, I'm struggling to log in. Uh, I'm, I'm listening. I'm using uh, uh, Faith Khoibane's uh, gadget. Oh, I'm yes, I see. That. Honorable Deputy GM. Yes. I see this Faith. Where yes. Kwana keeps on coming. Yes. yes, I can see that. Yes. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Oh, I see Honorable Inok Mutetwa has, has also logged in. Yes, yes. Chair. Can I also we have request all of us to, to mute our gadgets? Uh, we, we can only chair, do that when we speak. We have cancelled our CRC meeting, Chair. That's why we had to come and okay. join this. Okay, I'd already registered your apology. Thank you very much. Uh, on Honorable Mutetwa. Uh, can I invite the Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, over to you? Uh, uh, give us guidance on how you want to proceed forward. We are in your hands. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Good morning to you. Good morning to Honorable Members, the Deputy Minister, and um, the team from the Department. Um, Chair, I'll just make some few remarks and allow DM to make few remarks as well and then we'll take the presentation. We do believe that we'll, we'll not take more than the time you have allocated us. We should be able to finish in time. Chair, I thought it's important for me upfront as we present this, like we did in the portfolio committee to give an outline of where we are as the portfolio, uh, matters that previously members of parliament would have raised as concerns and how we envisage to be able to uh, deliver on this um, uh, APP that we are presenting before you. Um, Chairperson, we previously committed um, on stabilizing the portfolio. I can confirm to members of the parliament of the NCOP that all boards have been appointed. So, and also in terms of vacancies, all those vacancies have been filled. We've had a resignation of the HTA board chairperson. We currently have an interim chair and a full-time chair would be appointed through cabinet process. In terms of CEOs in the portfolio in, in entities, all CEO positions have been filled. As you know, previously we had difficulties of that, those, except for PPRA, which um, the CEO and the board, had, uh, the board had terminated the relationship between the CEO and themselves. And the matter was before the court. Um, and also they've indicated that they will be starting the process. Um, towards the end of March, um, end of April, CISOs on boots has resigned and therefore the board has indicated that they will be starting a process of recruitment. In terms of other appointments, we have given concurrence all positions that have been vacant in PPRA, you know that there were quite a number of them, have been filled. Safe to say what is still outstanding is the matter of the uh, CFO whom the preferred candidate withdrew after um, the board had sought concurrence from myself. Uh, COO concurrence have been given. Uh, I've been informed that the candidate will start from the 1st of June. In terms of Shra, 
the corporate managers, you know that the act says corporate manager instead of CFO, concurrence has been given. So in terms of the key positions in the portfolio in both the, in all the entities, uh, we'll be left with a CFO and HPRC as there are issues there, which we still need to conclude between myself and the board um, so that we can be able to say in terms of senior, at least CEOs and CFOs or CFOs, um, uh, we have all appointed. Um, Chair, you would note in the department, we had quite a number of vacancies as well in terms of DDGs. We have appointed to the CFO, starting with the 1st of May, Ms. Lucy Pelle has been confirmed, she was acting. DDG policy will start from the 1st of June, saving notice in the sister department that she's been working at, Ms. Mushongo. DDG informal settlements upgrading and emergency housing has started from the 1st of May, Mr. Zama, who is already with us in the department. On the matter of the DG, the matter has been concluded. The DG has started in, uh, the former DG uh, Chang'an has started at Cocta being transferred. You'd have noted that matter was um, also reported to the select committee and, and members of parliament. Um, and we will be starting the recruitment process in that. We have filled critical posts that we had in the department, uh, quite a number at some point, uh, almost about 16 senior managers and that we have been able to fill. On the changes that we are presenting on policy, which the team will do, I want to flag the following, that as we work from the 1st of April, emergency housing grant has been stopped to be a, a grant for province and municipality, but consolidated to be a national responsibility with the 1st of April, and we'll go into that detail. But what we have decided is that based on the challenges of previously on disasters and emergency housing, where we find that we go and provide temporary units, we stay 10 years without going back and people then, because those durability of those um, TRUs, it's for a short term and therefore they start falling apart without us being able to come back. We've taken a decision to do alternative technology so that we are able to um, go once, spend once in a family household, spare the resources, but also ensure sustainability in the households. We have changed quantums in terms of um, consideration of inflation and high cost of material with 1st of um, April. This will assist us in reducing the number of incomplete projects that we are seeing because contractors leaving. And we are, do acknowledge that uh, this is not the only reason for incomplete projects, but we think it contributes quite a lot. We have changed the provision from the 1st of April for disabled beneficiaries that we will include butler bars out of complaints that we have received that they get attacked and actually people go into their houses knowing that they are vulnerable and that they will start receiving that we will put butler bars to protect them as the most vulnerable people. Uh, provision for solar panels um, for all BNG beneficiaries with projects starting from the first and also water tankers as a compulsory um, element in rural communities. On entities, Chairperson, I must say, I did speak on terms of stability, but we will conclude the restructuring and repurposing of entities to deal with duplications and overlapping within this year. But the implementation will start in the 2024, 2025. So as ministry, I'll be leading in this and reporting to cabinet is, we are one of the few uh, portfolios that have not implemented what cabinet has done and we've been asked to fast track it. What is still outstanding while we raise this thing, there are challenges, Chair, up front, I must say as the minister, that um, we're presenting this report. We do know that as well yourself, as you do your oversight, you would have seen that there's still a lot of backlog that we still have to deal with. But again, because of legacy issues, you'll find inefficient and quality of service that have been provided. We, con we will continue to improve in this area so that going forward, we do not have this backlog but we do not have a situation whereby the quality of service and the efficiency of our work is still questioned. We intend to improve around monitoring and evaluation, um, especially that should go together with support for provinces and municipalities in areas where there are difficulties. We committed previously Chair, to deliver a reliable, efficient and transparent digital platform by the end of March. We still don't have it. 
we are working around the clock. I was at Soweto yesterday at Mbiso, and the challenges there and the unhappiness of the communities was quite clear and visible that unless we have this system that is transparent, that people can check, we continue to have complaints that we have and the quality of service that we provide will continue to be questioned. So Chair, those just are my few remarks. We are here committed, Chair, to continue to working and the feedback and the inputs always assist us to close the gaps, especially in some of the areas where there are blind spots, especially because members of parliament continue to be in their constituency areas and communities give them feedback and that assists us in enhancing our work. I'll hand over to the DM. Once DM is done, the acting DG will take over with the team to make the full presentation chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Minister. Uh, good morning uh, to you, Minister, uh, members of the select committee, the chair of the select committee, acting DG and senior official. Chairperson, I would like to thank also ECHO, the minister, in thanking the select committee for giving us uh, an opportunity to come and present. Chair, the, the minister has touched on all critical areas. I think I will speak on only two areas. DM, maybe the close minister. the video, we can't hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. From the beginning, you didn't hear me, Minister. Hello. Uh, I think we can hear you, you now, DM. Okay, okay. I, I, I already greeted everyone, uh, 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 Chairperson. I don't know what's going on with my gadget because I managed to go to my gadget. I, I was saying, Chair, uh, uh, the Minister has touched on all the critical areas of the department. And, and maybe two areas that I would like to add on. The, the, the minister, when she joined the department as, as one of the issues that she raised that she must un, uh, unblock the, the blocked uh, projects and altogether there are 320 and, and, and 20 and which we intend to finish those uh, unblocked uh, project within three years. And again, Chair, it has been um, a worry to uh, the select committee and also the portfolio committee, the pace of uh, issuing the, the title deeds. We are looking at it, Chair, and we are going to try uh, uh, by all means to make sure that we, 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 we fast track the issuing of the title deeds. It's something that it was raised many a times by the, both committees, the NA and the, the select committees. We know that we're not very good uh, on uh, issuing um, uh, the, 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 the title deeds. Oh, there are many, many matters uh, that around the, the issuing of title deeds, town establishment, which we are looking at it now, working together in the DTM now, we feel that maybe we will be able to actually work together and make sure that we issue a, a title deed. And then, then the last thing, Chair, is, 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 is build capacity. We want to build capacity to reduce the consultants and strengthen support to municipalities to increase the service delivery. Service delivery at the moment, it, it's quite, especially at the, at the level of local government, Chair, it's, it's actually giving us some kind of a headache, but we are working together with the municipalities. As Minister has already raised yesterday, and um. I'm here in, in, in Gauteng, we were in Soweto yesterday, and, and people were raising all these issues, which we think some of them, they, are, they rely on, on, on and municipalities, and we are going to fast track and make sure that we work together to, 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 to make sure that uh, we, we deal with this, all these is, is issues. And I want to thank you, Chair and the Minister, for giving me the, the opportunity. To, to, to raise uh, th these issues. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, good morning, I'm done, Chair. Th thank you very much, uh, on DM. The minister had said that uh, the one to follow is the acting DG. Over to you, acting DG. Um, th thank you, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members um, um, of, the, of the Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Water Sanitation and Human Settlements um, Committee. 
Um, I will be taking you through the presentation. Um, if I can have, please have the slide, um, the slideshow. Slide number three. Slide number three. Um, thank you, Peppers, Honorable Chairperson. We're briefing the committee on our 2023-24 APP of the Department of Human Supplements. Slide four. Slide four. And um, slide four, Chairperson, I won't be reading bullet by bullet. I'm just gonna highlight um, the first bullet in terms of the compliance with the requirements of submission of the APP 2324 that we have complied. Um, um, and also we have um, we submitted to our key stakeholders and met the deadline of DPME. And then I will go to the last bullet, um, Chairperson, which talks to the inputs that we received from the sector um, in terms of all the comments, um, including from DPME, comments from the Auditor General, and also um, inputs from the, the SONA that were taken into account in the compilation of this um, APP. Um, let's go to slide number six. Slide number six refers to the MTS, MTSF outcomes, um, which are we responding to the special transformation through multi-program um, integration in priority development areas. Um, this is where um, we've got different programs um, um, in order to get an impact um, in the delivery of services um, in human settlements. Um, and also in adequate to address the adequate housing and improve quality living environment and the security of tenure. And um, the next slide. The next slide, um, Honorable Chairperson talks to the revised MTSF five year targets um, that we have planned for um, as a national department. Um, the, the PDAs, which is the priority development areas, um, we have planned for 94 to make investments in the 94 areas to invest in. And these are the, are the, are the projects that um, uh, form part of different, pro of, of different pro programs in order to get um, the, the, uh, the better impact. And also, uh, uh, um, Honorable Chairperson, with our PDAs, what we are also um, addressing is to make sure that um, we we improve on our on our sector planning um, as a sector, but also in also the other sector departments that will be contributing because it's not only um, human settlement sector that um, is um, um, addressing the spatial transformation through the multi program in priority areas. Um, the second part of the special transformation response indicator talks to the, the acquired land um, of our previous MTSF in the PDAs areas um, where we were expected to have um, rezoned all that land. Um, the BNG um, in terms of adequate housing and improved quality living improvement. Um, our target there for the MTSF is 300,000 um, delivery of houses. Um, and the next one linked to that, another program is the First Home Finance, which is formerly known as FLISP, where the MTS target is 20,000 um, households that uh, received uh, received financial assistance and purchase units um, through First Home Finance. I must indicate, Chairperson, here that this is a target that we will achieve um, as a sector. Um, also, we have revised the policy, um, which also has expanded that we are no longer only focusing on the bonded household, um, also the unbonded um, households and all other types of households um, have improved. Um, have, uh, we have expanded the scope um, that will ensure that we, we deliver. On the next slide.
On the next slide, we, we're talking on the target of the number of service sites delivered. MTSF target is 300,000 of service sites um, delivered. Um, the second, the, the next one will be the number of rental housing units delivered, uh, which is 18,000 um, rental housing. And also the CRUs, um, MTSF target is 5,000. And the number of informal settlements upgraded with, food, with permanent services, our MTSF target is 1,500 um, um, informal settlements upgraded, upgraded with permanent services. Honorable Chair must indicate that permanent services, they include water sanitation, electricity, um, and, um, and, and transport. In terms of the security of tenure, the number of title deeds, um, Rated start, our target stands at 1.1 million. I must indicate to Chairperson, this is the area that um, um, we are not um, um, making good progress um, in the current MTSF um, um, uh, period. The next slide. In addition to the MTSF targets, um, Chairperson, we also have identified um, uh, ministerial sector priorities, um, which are not covered in the MTSF. And those um, include, um, in addition to the special trans transformation and consolidation by directing our grants and other investments into declared priority and um, human settlements and housing development areas in order to ensure um, the alignment with the district um, development model. We are uplifting the, the DDM model as part of our implementation plan. And then I will go to one it um, next item that I will highlight is the, is the elevation uh, of uninhabitable mud houses. Um, we, as we have seen also how um, the, the disasters um, have um, have impacted negatively on the on the mud houses. We have made that as a priority. Eradication of asbestos roof has been added as a priority. Um, job opportunities that are created has also been elevated in the sector. Um, together with the unblocking of block projects, um, have also been elevated in terms of our our priorities, um, so that we'll be will so that we unlock um, the backlogs where we've got beneficiaries that are linked to the block projects. They appear on the system as having benefited, um, but actually because those projects have never been completed, they did not benefit. Um, part of the priorities is the digitization of our systems, um, also in particular in response to our beneficiaries where they need to have access of knowing when they have uh, um, um, as part of the digitization. If they have registered for, for, for a house, they are able also to track their progress or the status in terms of their application, including um, where is their house uh, been approved and linked to each project. And this is also part of the, pri of the priorities. Honorable Chairperson, we have not been doing well in terms of our project monitoring. Um, we are also elevated, elevating the projects um, uh, monitored where we are linking the monitoring thereof in terms of the, the programs, which means each and every program in the national department um, will have to play a role in the projects monitoring in the sector. The next slide. The next slide um, talks to the standardization of the indicators. These are the indicators that we have planned for all of us as a sector including the provincial departments of human settlements. Um, this is also a um, honorable chair in line with the integrated um, sector planning. Um, we submit to the department of DPME all the, um, every year and all the consolidated indicators that we'll be um, responding to. Um, Chairperson, you will see that um, uh, the majority of them, I have already covered them under the MTSF with your permission if um, I should not read all of them, including the slide number, 30, number 11. If I can move to slide number 13. Slide number 13 covers the administration. Uh, this is mostly compliance, um, Honorable Chairperson. We need to comply with all the prescripts 
um, in the department, um, including the, our response into risk management and audit plan. So I'm not gonna read all of these. These are mostly inwardly looking. Um, the next slide. The next slide continues. Um, I will elevate the report on annual ICT plan. Um, this also talks to the digitization, Honorable Chairperson, that I referred to as a priority, together with the last um, uh, bullet uh, that says implemented digital transformation strategy and implementation plan. That's the output that we are planning for in, the, in, in this current financial year. Um, and our indicator is in terms of the digital transformation strategy and implementation plan thereof um, um, in 2023-2024. Um, the next slide. The next slide in terms of our finances, Honorable Chairperson, compliance continues. Um, I, will, I will summarize our quarterly assessments that we conduct on our grants, which is HSDG, ISUPG, um, as, we, as we disperse them to the the provincial departments of human settlements and the metros. Um, we do the assessment and um, honorable Jefferson indicator there um, that we will be doing eight quarterly assessments conducted on HSDG and ISUPG. Um, and also we'll do eight quarterly assessments on the performance of um, USDG and ISUPG. And then the last one is the reporting that we'll be doing um, on the monitoring of the set aside for the designated groups. Um, let me indicate, Honorable Chairperson, that all the grants that are highlighted, they are conditional grants. In the assessments that we do as a department, we need to make sure, ensure that the conditions thereof are being complied with, and also that there is value for money as we disperse these grants. Uh, the last um, target, um, Honorable Chairperson, on the set aside, and um, this is in terms of in response to the economic transformation as the set aside um, includes the grants that um, have been allocated to, um, to women, which our target is 40%, um, and for the youth, which is um, 19%, and then 5% for persons living with disabilities. Um, we need to monitor all the time um, how the provinces are faring in this, in this area. Um, I must also indicate, Honorable Chairperson, that this is an area that we have been battling with the sector, but we are getting better now in understanding um, in terms of the compliance thereof. Uh, the next slide. The next slide um, talks to our research policy strategy and planning, which is the core business of the department. Um, the PDAs that I have um, alluded to, the priority development areas, um, Honorable Chairperson, um, is that um, we need to report um, on the monitoring of the developments in the PDAs, and we are planning for our monitoring reports in the integrated implementation and, and programs on the PDAs, um, and also in terms of the reports on human settlements allocation to, to, to the PDAs, um, you will you will see Honorable Chairperson in my um, um, later slides the allocation which will be um, linked to our our grants that we disperse. So we have to report on the monitoring thereof. And the next slide is the one that talks to the rezoning of the land that is part of the MTSF target, um, Honorable Chairperson, that we have to monitor the rezoning of the land that was acquired. Um, this is also a target that we have not been doing very well on it. Um, we are trying now to have um, um, uh, more processes and more responses in, in order to respond to the rezoning of the land. Um, in terms of the business plans, um, uh, we have two uh, business plans. We need to assess them. Um, and also uh, provincial and metros um, plans, they get assessed. And this is in response, um, Honorable Chairperson, um, that will give us the state of readiness as a sector, whether in terms of our plans, the projects that we have, um, are, they, are, they, um, are they ready to hit the ground or where the status is? I must also indicate, Honorable Chairperson, that in terms of the monitoring per, 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 per programs, 
we have now started to um, to 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 be to be visible or to engage with the with the projects at provincial level from the planning stage, so that by the time we receive the business plans um, from the sector, we are already aware of the status of those projects. We continue to improve, Honourable Chairperson, um, in this area. Um, we are we are just about now to conclude the checklist to say this is what needs to have already been complied with. We enhancing that that um, that um, 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 list um, as a sector. Um, with effect, like we were discussing it um, last week um, in the in the technical amendment. Not last week, actually, it was this week. So we are improving also in this area. Um, the next, the next slide. The next slide, um, Honourable Chairperson, I will I will talk to I will elevate the policy program because the MTSF we have we have spoken to it. Policy is the is our core business in the department. What we are planning for is the is the is the the, the number of policy programs that have been approved. Why we are going for the program, Honourable Chairperson, is that we need as a sector to agree on which policies that needs to be prioritized, such as the white paper as we are currently stand, so that we focus in the, in the policies that are going also to give us the impact as, as a sector, not as a national department, is a collaborated effort. And those policies also need to be approved um, 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 in terms of the 2023-24. A research agenda, um, we are following the same route, Honorable Chairperson, um, that our research agenda should respond to the research areas that are a priority um, in, the, in the sector as a whole. And this also will enable us um, to, to have a better understanding and better, um, and, better and, and current um, research um, areas um, which, will, which should assist us in terms of the improvements in our implementation. Um, the next slide. The next slide um, talks to the, to the targets in terms of our IGR and our entities. Um, we continue to monitor the entity's performance. Um, and also in terms of the IGR, we are planning um, for the intergovernmental um, relations programs implemented. These also include the programs that are run by, um, um, by both the minister and, and the deputy minister. Um, as these programs um, are, are being conducted, this is where also we get um, all the, the issues that are raised and problem areas, and then we are able to zoom um, into those specific areas. Um, this has also proved to be very much um, um, helpful in terms of how we interact um, as a sector and also improve our IGR um, 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 as government. Um, Honorable Chairperson, let me um, let me move to slide number nineteen. Number nineteen talks to our plans in terms of informal settlements, upgrading, and the emergency housing. Um, we also do the provide the support. We are planning there for the 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 the, the the support that we provide um, to the nine provinces and eight metro metro metros um, in the upgrading of informal um, um, settlements with permanent um, solutions. Um, I must indicate, Honorable Chairperson, that this has um, 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 resulted in the improved um, business plans um, in this area, um, so that also when we get to the implementation, um, then we are all on the same page. The emergency housing guidelines on our Chairperson, this is a new area as we are now responding to the disasters um, directly. And um, what we are planning here for is the emergency housing, housing guidelines um, that we have to develop. Um, this, is, this is the target that we are, the new target from this financial year with effect from the 1st of April. And also um, we are planning to have finalized the emergency housing guidelines that will inform everybody else in terms of who does what, the responsibilities um, going forward. 
affordable and social rental on slide number 20. Um, this is an MTSF um, target, um, Honorable Chairperson. If I can indicate that um, we do also quarterly reports um, on the on the rental and, and, and social and, and social housing program. And also in terms of the CRUs, we have to monitor those um, 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 closely at project level, um, like I indicated um, um, before. Uh, the title deeds, um, we also monitor how many title deeds that have been registered. Um, I did indicate Honorable Chairperson that we are using different strategies now to tackle um, this target. Um, the next, um, the next target is the one that talks to the block projects um, that we need to monitor across nine provinces. In this financial year, we are planning um, to monitor the block projects and um, across nine provinces, and those will be 320. Um, as we as we conclude um, per province in terms of how many block projects that they have, then the number will increase. And as I've indicated, um, Honorable Chairperson, that this target also will assist in ensuring that those um, beneficiaries that um, were earmarked to have benefit, benefited on these block projects, they will be able then to benefit correctly. The next slide. The next slide, um, it is the monitoring of our delivery on BNG um, um, units, um, where we will be um, reporting um, uh, four times uh, per annum. And also in terms of the, the service sites, we will also be doing the same um, on our chairperson. And then um, four reports also on the monitoring of the households that receive the financial assistance through first home finance and also the job creation. Let me also emphasize here, Honorable Chairperson, that in terms of the job opportunities that have been created across the sector, we have agreed that um, we need to have this target um, to have the numbers right from the beginning at the planning stage per project um, so that we, we do not basically to, to go backwards and say how many projects were actually created by each pro project um, afterwards. So this needs to be part of the planning at the planning stage. Um, the next slide. The next slide talk to the eradication of asbestos, which is our new priority. Um, that also we will be monitoring um, through the, the four reports um, that we'll be um, um, issuing and also the eradication of mud houses. Let me just explain one thing, Honorable Chairperson, um, because the question also that um, gets asked is that there's, there are a number of reports that we are planning for. Um, those reports, uh, the, the details will be on our TIDs um, in, in technical indicator descriptions in terms of what those reports should have. Um, because we, we are not just planning for the empty reports that um, will not have any meaningful progress um, um, as a national department. We had, in the past, we had planned put on in the, play, the numbers in, in, in the APP. And on the advice of the Auditor General was that um, um, enhance your TIDs. Don't put the, the, the numbers in the on the APP because you are not at the implementing stage. Um, so that is why these targets are being crafted like this. But those reports need to be responding to the to the delivery that um, has been planned for. Uh, slide number 23. Slide number 23, um, this is the MTSSF project indicator where we are um, in terms of the PDAs, the number of integrated implementation programs that we prepared. The target is 94 and we have achieved um, 54 um, and 54 are planned, um, 50, sorry, 54 have been achieved. And then in terms of the number of PDAs that we have to invest in, the 2024 target is 94. And, and um, we, we have already declared 186 um, PDAs. And then this now talks to the investments that 86 
um, um, uh, plans will be invested in through the HSDG, 53 in the provinces in terms of the ISUPG, 35 um, um, IUSPG in the metros, and then 17 um, um, invested in the metros. Um, the percentage of the acquired land in our previous MTSF period, we had acquired 19,000 hectares of land. And so far, the actual uh, progress is not encouraging an honorable chair. We're sitting at 663, which is 2.7% um, that we have done. And the number of BNG houses delivered, MTSF target is 300,000, and we have done 184. 1,637, which is 61.5%. Uh, Number of households that received um, fire assistance through first home finance, the, uh, the MTSF target is 20,000. We are sitting at 17,492. And Honorable Chairperson, I must indicate this is the target that we will, we will um, um, achieve um, at the end of the MTSF period. The next slide. The next slide um, talks to the MTSF projects um, indicated. Number of service sites delivered, uh, the target is 300, 300,000. And what we, we are standing at is 158,769, um, which is 52%. Um, Honorable Chair, um, with the numbers, we, we are now increasing the delivery in, this, in the service sites. We are we will almost be able to, to meet this target um, for the MTSF period. We're currently sitting at a 52, um, 52%, but as we see the numbers, they are going up quite quickly. The rental um, housing, the 18,000, we are sitting at 54% progress, and the CRU's target is 5,000, we are sitting at 33.5, 33 uh, we are not likely to, to meet um, this target, um, Honorable Chairperson, and also the informal settlements and upgrading. Um, this is the target also that we are not, we are battling with because 1,500, we have only achieved 22% of the target um, to upgrade the informal settlements with permanent services. Um, the number of title deeds, um, Honorable Chairperson, I've alluded to the fact that this is a target that we are battling with, but also we have engaged um, also in the Department of Justice to assist us with the, with also the, the in response of the disputes um, going forward. We are trying um, different um, in programs in addressing the, the backlog in the title deeds. Um, let me just indicate um, in closing on the MTSF, um, Honorable Chairperson, that this also um, MTSF period has been marked by um, a lot of unfortunate situations like the disasters that we have had um, as a country. And that um, including the floods, the fires, and the COVID-19. Um, and that also had um, a very huge negative impact in terms of the delivery of the human settlement services. Um, on slide, on the next slide. On the next slide, um, we're presenting our plans in terms of the, the number of integrated implementation plans um, for the PDAs um, per, per, provincial, per, per provincial department. Um, Jefferson, the plans there you will see is three for Western Cape and six for Eastern Cape, um, two for, for, for Houting and so on. And let me indicate the difference between between the five uh, first provinces and the four. Um, the targets for Northwest, not Northwest, Northern Cape, Free State and Limpopo, um, the plans um, have already been completed. Now those um, uh, provinces um, would now be looking at the implementation of the plans. Um, the next part of the standardized indicators is in terms of the investment of the total human settlements allocation in the PDAs. Um, you will see the per province um, honorable chair that um, the total budget, if I can start with the Western Cape, 
The total budget that is planned for the investment in the PDAs is at 837 uh, uh, million. And the total allocation um, uh, for, the, for the year, which is 23-24, is that 2.2 billion. Um, so it goes on uh, um, like that also for the Eastern Cape, that the, what is being planned for in the PDAs is 336 uh, million, and the total allocation is two, is, is two billion. Um, which makes up the percentages that you see um, on top there. Um, this is the area that we have been questioned on in terms of the, the response, the investments, the required investments that um, are supposed to be um, invested in the PDAs. Uh, hectares of land acquired, I have spoken to this one, Honorable Chair. Um, the next slide, which is slide number 27. The slide number 27, um, Honorable Chairperson, it's a breakdown of all our, our standardized indicators per province. As we have been requested, I'll just read maybe two or three. Um, for example, the number of breaking new ground houses delivered. Western Cape will be 4,829, Eastern Cape 7,632, and so on. And the total that is planned for is 36,244 for the current financial year. Um, it's the same with the number of service sites and delivered. We're planning for, as a, as a sector, for 42,350, broken down as indicated there, um, Honorable Chairperson. Um, the next slide. The next slide is a continuation, um, Honorable Chairperson. For example, um, the number of rental social housing units, um, we're planning for 3,200, broken down per province for 92 for Western Cape, 70 for Eastern Cape, and so on. Um, the question that uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson, the committee might ask is the impact of our plans in response to the backlog of the MTSF. Um, we are reviewing these plans um, that have been approved um, um, with, the, with the provinces and the metros um, in order to find also better ways of how we can, we can enhance the delivery um, in addition to what we have so that we can come closer into, into the achievement of the MTSF targets. Um, that will be the end of the non-financial targets, Honorable Chair. Um, with your permission, then I will request the CFO um, to take us through the, the budget allocation. Thank you, MPG. Honorable Minister, Honorable Deputy Minister, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members of the Committee, good morning. I will be taking the committee through the budget for the financial year that is under review. That will be able to enable us to meet on the target that has been planned. On the slide, um, honorable chairperson and members, you can see that for the year under review, 2023-24, as um, the national has vote, we are sitting with 34.5 billion. And we as a as, um, US settlement, we've got five programs and um, the budgets is divided into the programs and we can see that the administration that is the support is sitting with 507 million and the bulk of the allocation is sitting with the integrated human settlement planning and development in this program that's where our biggest uh, grants are sitting the human settlement development grant and the event settlement development grant as we are sitting with 23.4 billion and then on the informal settlement grant, that's where our two informal settlements uh, grants are sitting, the one for the metros and the other grant for the uh, provinces as we're sitting the 9.3 billion. Then we've got rental and social housing. This is um, the one that we've got the social housing regulatory authority that are um, implementing the social housing. And we are sitting with the 997. Then we've got affordable housing. Part of the money that is sitting here is um, the first home finance that is assisting us with the home buyers with, 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 with funding on that. Then on the next slide, we are seeing a breakdown by economic classification. On the economic classification, we are splitting between the operational budget 
and the grants and the transfers. Now, when we look at the departmental operational budget, we are sitting with 1.4 or 1.5 billion. The reason why it's showing is if the operational budget is more than a billion is the fact that on the operational budget included herein is the emergency housing response. For the prior years, we used to have the emergency housing grant that was sitting as a conditional grant. But as Minister has said earlier on, on her opening remarks, that we are no longer having a conditional grant when we are implementing the emergency housing responses. Hence, it's sitting under the payments for capital asset. It's been highlighted in Ember is 523 that, um, that will be assisting us for this financial year to immediately respond if there's a disaster or a, 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 an emergency um, housing. Then our goods and services, honorable chairperson and members, is sitting at 536 million, and the compensation of employees is, is sitting on the 415. Going down on the grant and transfers, the human settlement development grant and the informal settlements, these are conditional grants that are transferred to provinces to assist us with the upgrading of informal settlements in the provinces, and the other one is assisting us with the implementation of the human settlements programs. In total, we have got 19 billion that is transferred to provinces for the year under review. And when we go down, we've got the ones that we are transferring to metropolitan municipalities, the split into the urban settlement development grant and the informal settlements partnership grant. These are 12.5. Both these conditional grants are allocated based on the allocation formula that is gazetted on the door bill that has been uh, passed uh, around March. So the allocation formulas for the two grants are sitting in there. Basically, the provinces one, the allocation formula basically it deals, 70% is deals with the inadequate housing. In provinces, the share of poverty and the share of the population. When you look at the uh, municipal, the urban settlement development grant, the allocation formula that we've gazetted there is deals with the bulk infrastructure. So in the, in the there is a uh, workbook that gives us the basis for the allocation. Below there, I'll be talking to the allocations per province and per, per metros. However, we have got the entities that are assisting us. There is SHRA, as I've spoken to, on the program. And then there is SHRA, we are giving them operational budget. We are giving them the CCG, which is the grant that is assisting them with the implementation of the social housing. We've got community service ombudsman. We are also transferring the operational grant. Then we've got the NHFC, which is the National Housing Finance Corporation. Those are the implementers of the first home finance. And we've got the Housing Development Agency that we are assisting them with the operational grants. And below the last bottom departmental transfers is our Bazaar Scheme, UN Habitats and City Alliance. This is the international bodies that we are aligned, that we are aligned to as human settlements. The next slide is giving us a breakdown on the human settlement development grant. So the total is 19.4 billion. Now, as I said earlier on, that we have got an allocation formula that we have gazetted that looks into the inadequate housing. So when we use the allocation formula, the allocation formula is based on the census 2011. We thought that by this time, we will be having the numbers coming in so that we can look because we needed the data to assist human settlements. But by the time of allocating this, the census, 2022 numbers were not out. But however, when the numbers come out, we will go back and revisit because the numbers that we are using for the census 2011. So based on that information, Houghton is still sitting with the highest allocation followed by KZN. Then we are having Western Cape and then Eastern Cape. But the least one there is Northern Cape. So we are hoping that when the numbers come through for the next financial year, yes, we're going to see a change. But let me put forward that we are supposed to review the allocation formula because throughout the years, some of the provinces are complaining about the allocation formula that we are using because, but we are waiting for the information from the state SA. The next slide is the informal settlement upgrading partnership grant. This one is the one that is transferred to the provinces and um, as well with the information from the census and the allocation formula. So this is the breakdown showing that how then is sitting with the 1.2 billion and so on, so on like the other ones. The next slide is the Urban Settlement Development Grant. So this grant is transferred to our metropolitan municipalities. 
then even though we are having the split of, of the financial years, it's not the same, but as a national department with our financial year ending in March, we make sure that before end of the financial year, we transfer to all the metros because for them, it will be their third quarter and then we transfer all the grants to them. And then the, the allocation formula that we use as well is there, it's giving a split on all the metros. And then the slide is showing the breakdown of the 8.1 um, 8.1 billion across all the metropolitan municipalities. Then we can see that the number one that is up there is um, at the Houghton. You, you can see that we are sitting with 1.6 billion. So the highest allocation goes to City of Jobek, and then you can see that it's followed by um, Etabini and then um, and then Ekurulin and so on. Then the last one is the informal settlement upgrade department grant. Um, I've moved to the next slide, the informal settlements upgrade partnership grant. Thank you. On that slide as well, we have got an allocation per the metro. So this one is to assist the metros to upgrade the informal settlements within their space. Honorable Chairperson and members, that will be the submission on the budgets and allocations for the year under review. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for the presentation. I think it was quite straightforward and, and very, very much uh, informative. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for that. Before we start with questions, uh, any other concluding remarks from either you, uh, Honorable Minister, or Deputy Minister, before we take questions? Or you okay? On my side, uh, Chair, I'm fine. We will Good. wait for the questions. Yes. Wonderful, TM. Okay, let's start taking questions. I have a proposal to make. I know that members don't speak for a very long time. Uh, but if you can speak to what I'm going to propose, we will have a swift meeting and that will be productive and enable all members to contribute. I propose that we allocate to each member that is both questions and answers. We allocate 10 minutes per, per member, which means I'll afford you the opportunity. I know that others ask for a minute, others for two minutes, but ask your questions. And then I will allow the minister and the team to respond and thereafter go to the next member, go to the next member until, until we are done. If we can do that, I'm sure it will take us about an hour or so uh, and, and finish with our with our questions. I think this is the approach that we must use. And I'm going to start with Honorable Sheikh. I'm aware that uh, you, you'll, you'll lock out uh, before half past 11 as you requested. Uh, you'll be followed by Honorable Motsamai, uh, who will then be followed by Honorable Smith. For now, the three hands, and then we'll take it from there. Ask your questions. You'll get responses, we'll make follow-ups, and then we are done. And in that period, I, I'll allow you 10 minutes, not more than 10 minutes to do that. Over to you, Honorable Sheikh. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, for the opportunity and for accommodating uh, the fact that I have to leave soon. Uh, my apology for the camera chair, but uh, just to let you know that I am on the other side of the camera, I, I just put it on for a second. Um, let me also then uh, thank the, the minister, the DM and the entire department for, for, for the presentations that were made. Um, Chepson, I think when, when the minister opened uh, the, the meeting, she mentioned the issue around the policy changes that are to, to take place uh, within uh, the department, especially with regard to the emergency housing grant. Um, and I, I just wanted to uh, understand uh, some other aspects of it. Uh, while, while I think, uh, you know, it's great that the department is looking into uh, sustainability issues, 
um, looking at issues like solar panels, uh, water tankers, uh, etc., as well as the issue of the uh, safety uh, with regard to vulnerable people. Um, I just want to understand like whether these units, which would have been temporary, uh, I know it's important to look at the sustainability issue, but how, what, what would then be the lifespan of, of these temporary units or, and or does it replace the fact that there would be a need for a more permanent, permanent structure? Um, secondly, Chair, with regard to the centralizing of the emergency housing grant uh, funding, I know that it, it would also deal with some of the challenges around procurement and the utilization of the emergency grant. Um, I, I would just want to know whether centralizing this grant uh, would not affect the efficiency of delivering of uh, these uh, emergency housing to people, uh, you know, uh, or closer to, to, to people that are affected by, by this matter. Uh, secondly, Chair, um, I, I want to, uh, okay, with regard to the priority aspect of the digital and transparent platform, um, while if you look at the target of the department in the current financial year, it is more of uh, being in a developmental phase um, as opposed to the implementation of, of the, the platform. Um, I just want to, to know um, by when does the department actually uh, intend to have the system up and running and actually have the system implemented if it's not at the end of the of, of 2024? Uh, but the chair agree it's important that the department has has prioritized uh, this this uh, this matter. Um, chair, so with regard to the the IGR programs, uh, the intergovernment, uh, yeah, the the, the seventeen uh, that is reflected in in, in the APP. Uh, just clarity around the number 17, uh, but also how effective has this IGR program been um, in terms of, of addressing some of the problems uh, around, around human settlements. Um, so with regard to the 320 block projects uh, across the nine provinces, as well as the eradication of asbestos and mud houses, if uh, we can also get some kind of um, perhaps not in this meeting, but with some kind of more information from the department in terms of the spread, uh, where, where in which provinces, uh, et cetera, but also in terms of the asbestos in the mud houses, uh, you know, the, the breakdown where they are. And I think for the purposes of the committee doing oversight, I think that that will be important. Um, then again, Chair, with regard to the, the, the title deeds, uh, while um, the department has also indicated that the target is not likely to be reached, um, and that they would get the assistance of the Department of Justice with regard to, to disputes around uh, around the title deeds. Perhaps if we could also be given or taken through whether what, what are the other challenges with regard to, to the title deeds um, and to what extent uh, will the department reach its, its proposed target. Um, and finally, Chair, you know, the issue around RGB houses, um, you know, there are lots of challenges uh, in, in, in the various provinces with regard to whether it's the quality of RDP houses, with regard to recipients of RDP houses, either uh, renting the house out or reselling it, etc. Uh, also with regard to if the principal recipient may pass on, uh, you know, there, there are some challenges around, around people continuing to, or, or the members of the family continuing to live in that. Um, whether the department is also looking at other policy uh, amendments or, or, or interventions in terms of addressing these challenges. Thank you very much, Chair. Those are my questions. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Sheikh. Uh, Honorable Sheikh took four minutes. Over to you to, to respond. I'll give you about six to, yeah, to eight minutes in responding to the questions posed by Honorable Sheikh. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm going to ask um, the relevant, because there are two areas, it's on disasters and also on um, title deeds and um, things. I'll ask the relevant DDGs to, to take them and then I'll just close if there's any uh, issues. So we'll spread based, based on the responsible DDGs in the areas. Thanks, Chair. 
Okay, thank you very much. Over to you, D, DG, everything DG and D, 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 DGs. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, let me ask the um, ask the DDGs to start first. Yeah, I'm going to ask the colleagues, DDGs, please be mindful of time. Let's not take time. We know our areas of work. Please. Um, good morning, Minister. Good morning to the chairperson of the Select Committee and the Acting DG. Um, my name is Tepiso Moloi. I'm the Acting DDG for Affordable Housing. I'm going to take the question around the Mud Houses Block Project and Title Deeds. Um, let me start with the Title Deeds. The challenges around the Title Deeds is mainly on the issues around conveyancing, town planning, and um, the lack of bulk infrastructure, whereby the the, the properties cannot be um, um, transferred at the rate at which the department has envisaged. But the department has put in measures to work together with the Vulindela in the presidency and also one of our entities, the HDA, to deal with the issues around town planning and ensuring that all blockages around that uh, are facilitated with the relevant departments like the Department of Rural Development and the Deeds Office. So we're also working with the municipalities in that regard as well to make sure that they do um, assist um, in fast tracking of the of the opening of township registers. Um, we also are in the department trying to bring on board um, relevant professional capacity that will ensure that the targets that we had at the beginning of the MTSF, we are able to fast track on that. So there are measures that have been put in place to make sure that uh, we are able to accelerate the delivery in terms of the backlog in the title deeds. But also we are looking at the review in terms of also our planning processes in the department and approval of projects that would ensure that we are able to keep the clock in the title deeds from from growing further in terms of the block projects the department has, is in the process of 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 we have done the assessment and we have realized that uh, most of those block projects that we have reported on in terms of the number of 3400 previously um most of them have been closed out because we have realized that there were a number of uh, minor issues around um, expenditure, but those have been dealt with with provinces and um, those have been closed. And currently we have only a backlog of 619 block projects of which these would then be implemented within the next um, three years. And uh, the report, I think we had committed to the portfolio committee that would send the report, a detailed report on the block projects. And I'd like to recommend through you, Minister, that we also send the report to the select committee, which would be a detailed uh, report. With regard to the mud houses, yes, we also are doing an assessment with regards to the enumeration of the mud houses and collating them into a baseline that then we can then be able as the department to confirm in terms of the extent of the of the of the backlog that we are having but in the current financial year we do have a 9700 units in terms of mud houses that would be able to eradicate but we need to also indicate that most of the provinces are dealing with the mud houses especially the rural provinces in terms of the rural um, housing program whereby they are eradicating um, those mud houses um, and and we would also minister recommend that a detailed report be submitted with regards to the mud houses that will detail all the 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 the, 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 the progress within the various uh, provinces and the plans then going forward into how we indicate we would we envisage on eradicating such and i think the same would then apply also to the asbestos program because that is where now we are doing um assessments and those assessments would only come to fruition by the second quarter of this a financial year, we would have a clear indication and a picture of the extent of the asbestos uh, units that we have to eradicate. And we would also appreciate, Minister, if we can be afforded an opportunity to submit a detailed reports on these uh, particular priorities. Thank you, Minister. Maybe Chair, just to add on the issues around even asbestos and why there is a need for verification is that there's been a dispute between national and the province in terms of whether um, there are asbestos rules. For example, Western Cape will say we do not have, and whereas in terms of our records would have, so there is a need for us 
to have the verification between ourselves and province. Uh, that's why uh, Ms. Mnoy Tepiso is talking about a verification and later submission of the report. I thought I should highlight that in, uh, uh, in detail. My DDG for um, informal settlements and emergency housing has just started this week, uh, Chair. So I'm going to spare him, but just to indicate on the issues around the lifespan, because I don't want us to take long. The lifespan of ABTs, many of them are about 80 to 70 years, um, honorable shake. Um, and also the issue around improvement of um, efficiency. We do believe that the centralization will improve efficiency. There wouldn't be difficulties because currently you find that if money is allocated on a grant, it's sitting in a particular province, you need money in case then to respond to the challenges. Then you must do application, it's application from the process. So there's a lot of administrative work that we, we're trying to deal away with in this current process. Um, and also you'd see when we do lessons learned out of how we've dealt with emergency housing, for example, with the major disasters in KZN. This is why we had to take this decision even from cabinet point of view. I think that's that's the issue that I thought, let me just take this part uh, because more around the work, I, I think I got involved with DM a lot on disasters and emergency housing because there were quite a lot of unhappy people in communities and we felt that this approach would really help us a lot. And I think the DG can just answer on the issue around digital platform and then we hand over back to you. Um, th thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. In terms of the, the, the digital platform, um, we have planned to have um, the app um, that we'll be testing in the first quarter of this financial year. And then the, the implementation, full implementation, um, as we will be doing in phases um, and also testing, is we are planning for that in the, in the, in the current financial year, um, the digital transformation and strategy that will be um, implemented. That is our plan. If I can, Minister, just also add um, on the issue of the 17 IGR, um, 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 reach out program, whether this has actually resulted and given us any, any improvement, has it been effective? Yes, it has been effective because when we've got these outreach programs, um, we also have got um, community members that they that, that um, engage with the minister um, um, on various issues, and we are also there with the with the provinces and 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 the municipalities. So what we do when we go into these engagements, we take note of all the matters that are raised, um, which also in, include the destitute cases that we have in the country. Um, and we follow them up with our our counterparts in the provinces, and also community um, community members. They do also send us the WhatsApp as we do exchange the numbers as well to say where the progress is. So it is effective um, um, on our own membership. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, on oh, I will say, any question that we feel strong, or so if you okay, it's fine. Uh, thank you very much, Jefferson. I think I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Let me thank the department. Wonderful. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Mozamai. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Kiratole Buha, Minister Hoba Leronalo Litimiahai. Can the department provide provincial breakdown of the annual target so as they help members to conduct oversight in their provinces? In our 2022 committee report, we recommended that the department must provide quarterly report on the APP, why the department did not comply with our recommendation. Can the department provide a list of provinces and municipalities that will be supported by the department? Chair, at the committee, we must welcome commitment of the department to a great established roof and must house which were the legacy of apartheid women's settlement being to dedicate to Asbestos City. 
Eh, Chairperson, kwa tafela kufeta mwokete na kwa ya the Honorable eh, Sheikh kiko panyeli ya ka ACT. Kibi kifwa the Honorable Mbali. I kono ICBDs. I thank you, Chair. Mm, then that's not how we work. No, I get it. Would you feel it? Would you feel it? Ten minutes, but I only. Does it mean if all of you have shortages, I must take all your minutes, or does it? Hey, what's up, boy? When you go up, I went. Yeah, he wants to. If you've all spoken and take minutes, I must not speak because I'll speak at the end. You are you okay, or almost some of your questions are not okay. Honorable Bali will have a own bite. Over to you, Honorable Minister, on the questions posed by Honorable Zamai. Yeah, thanks, um, Chair. I think we'll allow the other colleagues to respond. Let me just talk to the issue because it's it's an executive responsibility to account to Parliament. Um, Zamai, we do submit quarterly reports. Um, it's legislated. We are required to report quarterly. We submit not only to Parliament but also to um, what is it, uh, DPME, and also to National Treasury. So it's a standard requirement, both in terms of the um, department and its entities. Um, if we had a problem of maybe late submission, we do communicate, but we've not had in the last financial year uh, that I had to receive a request of late submission. Um, so that is done. I think maybe, Chair, from the select committee, it might be an issue that um, because we've not had a select committee meeting where we present a quarterly report could be that oversight, but we could work together with your team administratively to see how best we ensure that members get those quarterly reports, even if the meeting is not to peruse, and then they can ask us questions, other written questions that we can respond to. Let me allow either DM or uh, the team to respond. There's issues around uh, the breakdown on, on provinces. Um, that indeed has been the request previously, and I did indicate to the team that we need to consistently make sure that it's breakdown. Let me hand over the list of the municipal. Okay, quick one. Yeah, I think DG will be able to give, I think even uh, Oliver Sheikh uh, uh, requested information uh, concerning a block project for each province. And I think this question is similar to that one of uh, they, they want uh, us to provide the municipalities and, and provinces uh, that will be supported by the department. I don't think it's a problem to do that. Honorable members, uh, uh, the department can easily do that and, and it will be sent to them. Uh, because it's 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 not easy for me to know all of them. I think they will definitely the DG will also the acting DG will also respond to that one. Thank you so much, Minister and and Chair. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Chair. It's an information that we have. Um, I think it's it's linked to the first response um, that Honourable Minister um, has um, also um, provided. Um, that information we do have on quarterly basis, so we will use the similar approach um, to send the information to, um, to to this committee. Thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you very much. Just then, Maybe let me come in back um, just to ask okay. Mr. Chair. I thought the, the, the team DG would go into detail. Let me explain that um, how we work um, in terms of allocation of resources. Um, what we do is on, on our grants that we give to the provinces, on HSDG, the provinces then will identify the municipalities specifically that the projects are going into. Then when we do the USDG and informal settlement upgrading, then we work directly with the eight metros. So most of the projects that we see from the USDG and the informal settlement upgrading grant, you'll find them in the, all the eight metros in terms of the work that we do. Now, when you look at the presentation, what we have tried to do on the presentation towards the end, 
it's more around allocation and I understand where you are raising the issues. Allocation in terms of the provinces, for example, how much is allocated per province so that we are able to do. Then in the presentation in terms of, or in the document in terms of the issues, it will give you, for example, to say in all these nine provinces, this is what we are doing. So it will be all of them. But in terms of the HSDG, when it breaks down, we wait for the province to give us based on those. So it could be information that we provide, but on the priority areas that the minister has identified, then we are able to say across, as Tepiso said, this is where we have um, renality unfinished projects. Therefore, this is where they are. So because it's work that is coming back and how Rizamankur is diva more, it's how we are trying to contain them in terms of the regions and the provinces. But for oversight purposes, um, Honorable Motamai, when we go into the detailed actual document, then you'll find around the areas. But also I think, Chair, what we could be able to do as well from our side, because the business plans is what you can utilize. We approve business plans of provinces and the metros, and that becomes a tool for you as, as, as members of parliament can be able to see, this is what we have approved in terms of um, APP, sorry, business plans per province, and then it gives you. So here we just utilize the finances to indicate in terms of the provinces in the portfolio, um, in, in the select committee presentation, then you'll see that all the provinces are covered and all those things. But clearly we do not work directly with municipalities ourselves, unless in the disaster areas and it's depending on where disaster has happened since the 1st of April, where we will be involved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Now, Ozo Landela is Honorable Smith. Honorable Smith, uh, over to you. Can you hear me, Che? Very, very well, very, very well. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, it's one of the <laughs> um chairperson um yes uh I've, i want to hear from the minister um in terms of um uh, um rdp houses and uh, and the allocation of rdp houses um what's the what's the progress in terms of having a national database and you know being able to use that to make sure that people do not dub, uh, double dip in terms of of uh, you know uh, this subsidized or, or um, uh, free housing that is being given um, because there's, there is, uh, I'm sure she's also aware that there is a serious problem where people have more than one RDP house, that don't actually stay in it, have their own house, and then rent those houses out uh, to other people, you know, who actually should be getting the houses in the first place. The second thing is, in terms of making sure that people are actually getting these RDP houses, uh, that really deserve them because uh, you'll find that somebody get an RDP house and then three months later, it is converted into a double story um, house. Um, then you ask yourself, but how does this individual actually qualify to get such a house? The other question I have uh, is also in terms of the allocation of uh, service stands as well as as uh, um, housing is there um, does all provinces have um, you know a, a minimum standard in terms of uh, what should be in place to be able to to hand uh, to to hand over such uh, stands or houses you know in terms of uh, access to water electricity. Uh, streets, street lights, um, you know, all those basic things that, that should be in place in terms of town planning. Um, and if, if not, then my question would be to the department, how, um, you know, uh, what is the plan to make sure that such a, a standard through, uh, is set uh, throughout the country? So that we don't sit with situations where municipalities or provinces, uh, you know, go and build uh, volumes of houses um, without 
looking at the you know the infrastructure that is necessary um you know to to give those people actually dignity and then at the end of the day you know you sit with situations i can give an example uh again in Mahalakwina, where i'm coming from where the rdp sections outside 14 extension 14 extension 19 extension 20 is sitting with problems of flood water because the stormwater systems uh, that exit the town has not been extended beyond the town's border, but now is flowing. All that stormwater is flowing uh, through the houses of all those RDP houses that is lower down, uh, uh, you know, on the slope towards the river. Um, and uh, um, then my last question uh, would be in terms of of the the uh, planning process around uh, these stands and houses in terms of of bulk infrastructure um because it seems like you know we are building um houses and we are putting out stands without considering the capacity of bulk water uh, bulk water bulk sewer systems electricity systems all of that um and 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 it you can't build and then afterwards catch up that if that's not how it works it's supposed to be in place and the capacity must be available to to do that extension so what is the department doing to ensure that that actually is in place thank you Jay. Uh, thank you very much so far so good honorable minister okay i'm going to ask uh, non tantla to come in hotel is Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, good morning, Chair and committee members, including the Peace Minister. Uh, the question that I'm going to respond to is the uh, one which talks to the issue of the allocation of the service stand. Uh, as a department, we do have norms and standards, uh, Chairperson. Uh, they are provided within our policy frameworks, which is contained in what we call a national housing code. In the code, you'll have a, a different programs that explains how to implement the entire housing subsidy uh, scheme. It has about 17 programs in total. But when it comes to the issue of the engineering services, which is the question that uh, Honorable Smith has uh, asked, uh, we do uh, issue the standards to provinces, to the municipalities and the metros such that we become specific around the areas that needs to be covered. There is a conventional five, which we often talk about, which is one, it's the water, the provision of water-based services. What we provide there is uh, the infrastructure that will enable the water to flow through the pipe. So we pay for the in construction of that uh, uh, water uh, uh, pipe. We also pay for the infrastructure that deals with sanitation. Uh, we all know urban areas, they differ from uh, rural areas. Uh, we do have a standard, which we call it a grade A and a grade B in relation to that, it gets prescribed as well to say what should uh, uh, provinces and, and municipalities provide for. So it's still also infrastructure that gets provided. Uh, the same also, the third element, it's the electricity, which provides for the high mass lighting, which I think it's there for uh, urban areas. Uh, the other element that we provide for, it's the road and storm water, and uh, which I think it will differ according to what maybe different municipalities would have approved. And the last one would be the issue of the um, infrastructure for the fuels removal. And we, it has been prescribed uh, to say uh, there will be skip bins and there will be provision of um, um, uh, infrastructure that goes with that. In some uh, instances, we even pay for the bulk that goes with the um, uh, collection of the waste and um, uh, what uh, removal in, in the cities. Uh, given that we are using two grants, which is the HSDG and the USDG, on the USDG side, we do accommodate the provision of bulk. 
uh, link and connector services. Uh, I think uh, uh, with the changes that the minister has uh, highlighted earlier on, uh, in terms of the provision of electricity, I think it's a new additional enhancement that we provide for, provided for in terms of the solar uh, panels uh, for all the areas. And we will be also providing such uh, panels which are called microgrids for areas which are more in, informal in nature, such that we are able to deal with issues of um, electricity supporting the challenges that we have. In relation to the question of the bulb uh, overall, within the HSDG uh, what, um, grant framework, we have made a provision that we should be able to allow uh, provinces to utilize a portion of the HSDG uh, grant to provide for bulk infrastructure. And bulk infrastructure, it's broad, and we all understand in some instances, it will be in areas where we know it's not easy to connect to the uh, waterborne uh, kind of infrastructure. And in some instances, it's where we'll be able to connect. So maybe part of the challenges could be coming from those areas which maybe could not be having the bulk connections, which creates a problem uh, uh, for the municipalities or also for the provinces that are uh, implementing. Uh, but Chair, I think all in all, all of it, it has been provided for in our policies and the housing code. And we also have this framework that we have put on the side, which we are saying that uh, provinces be able to uh, get a percentage of the HSDG. Uh, about 80% of it, we are allowing that they slice from it. In relation to what maybe the question of the allocation of um, houses, I think there is a clause in the um, White Housing Act, uh, which is section 10 of our Housing Act, which talks about our beneficiaries not selling the houses uh, before the expiry of a period of about eight years. I must say, uh, Chair and Minister and committee members, it is a challenge that we are facing. And we are working on it such that we come up with interventions that will support uh, the education of our communities that they understand what needs to be done. In the event, maybe the circumstances have changed, you should be able to approach the provincial office and offer that property such that we can be able to uh, deal with it without you having to sell it uh, informally. I'm going to stop there, Chair. I know I tend to be long. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much, uh, Acting DG. Honorable Smith, any follow up that we want to make? If any. Yes, yes Chair. Um, <laughs> with all due respect, sorry, Chair. chair you know there are questions that we haven't answered. Oh, sorry. Mm. Yeah, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. The last one. No, we are not. Yeah, That's he my was. Fault. That's my fault. Okay, my apologies. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Recording um, in progress. Um, Chair, just maybe um, the issue on, I think Nontanta answered the issue around uh, the service stands in terms of um, the compliance. And then the issue which honorable member raised around the progress around the database. I do acknowledge honorable member, um, the issues you've raised. It's what we experience all of us. Um, the first issue that I want to raise is that when we look at um, what you are raising as challenges where you find communities uh, going out and also um, selling the RDPs, as I said, I was in, in Soweto with the GM and yesterday. We found that when we look at what is happening, indeed, the national database will be quite helpful for us to be able to deal with the challenges where the system must be transparent and be able to assist us in terms of just reliability, uh, people being able to verify, making sure that those who do not, uh, who are not supposed to get into RDP houses are getting in. Um, even the issue of selling, I mean, the communities even yesterday were challenging us to go into this. There are two things, Honorable Member, I want to explain. One is that from our allocation, we do not allocate, like for example, foreign nationals and all that. We do explain to people, don't sell the RDPs, don't rent out, it's for you. 
Now, what is coming very evident is that we would need some monitoring evaluation, a monitoring mechanism to check whether people are renting this out and all those things. Currently, we do not have that capacity as the department to be able to do that. And that's why we rely on ensuring that within local government level, councillors are able to assist us with the information where it's done. In one area we were given um, to say, these people have rented out. We send people to go and verify. When they went there, for example, when they find the person and then the owner who is on record says, no, I went to, I've got a peace job. that I'm Recording doing, stopped. And that's why I'm not around, uh, uh, but I still stay in the house. So it's difficult to find evidence that you can inter deal with in terms of that. So more focus for us is to make sure that the right people who are supposed to get the right houses are getting the right houses. The conversation about those who are not supposed to will have to be able to do it within the system that is transparent, that does not get manipulated. I mean, we were sharing even, for example, last year in city of Johannesburg, an official was dismissed. A case was opened against that official for corruption who were found to have taken bribe around the issues. Then it's also a manifestation of even scams where sometimes they put my face and my number on there to say minister will be in this area to hand out RDP houses, give us a 1,000 to fast track you on the list. And then we've been advocating to say public must know that this is not supposed to happen. We do not sell any RDP houses. So we do believe, and I do agree with you, the challenges that you mentioned, Honorable Smith, in Mohalakwena, I do agree with them. But the issue around infrastructure, Nontanta was explaining that we have norms and standards in terms of building. This is the experience. We have legacy issues, for example, as you say, um, where there would have been houses that have been built previously before the norms and standards were in where you'd find that they do not have the quality of services that you want. Some would have built on, on, the, on the sewers. And that's why we're dealing with those as well as part of rectification programs, where we are fixing those areas, but we are continuing. Sometimes I say it's fixing the aeroplane while on air, because there are those legacy issues. But again, one of the areas where we have identified as a challenge is where we've given a developer status to municipalities. You find that when they are given a, a developer status, then they tend not to have the quality of people that are supposed to be helping and then they do wrong things. Now, hence you have this bill before you, honorable members now in the NCOP consumer bill. So we're talking about strengthening of NHPRC to assist us to ensure that we're building at the right areas and we're building the quality of houses that are required. Now, that's what is important. We've also indicated, acknowledged in, even in the NAPC meeting that there are weaknesses in NHPRC currently in provinces. We find other provinces are doing very well. You have um, inspectors that make sure that the houses are not um, um, signed off if they have problems. But again, as we talk about this developer status of municipalities, we recognize that you find that municipalities don't enroll these projects. Now, NHPRC does not come, is not able to know about these projects to come and do evaluation. So we've now tying, that's why the bill is trying to close all the gaps, put consequence management, and also putting responsibility for those who would be found to have done wrong things. What is it that we are doing about the issue of uh, developer status? Um, for example, in the NA, they re recommended that we withdraw everybody, we do the revaluation. We are currently, it's one of the areas I'm hoping we can be able to finalize next week in MinMEC uh, together with SALGA. Uh, SALGA is insisting that municipalities must be given a developer status. We do have a challenge in terms of current status. So we want to withdraw all of them, do a re review, re-evaluation and reissue on the basis of capacity. Uh, whether we'll find each other with Salga and provinces is something else, but in where instances where there's been evidence of wrongdoing, we've gone back to withdraw uh, the developer status. I hope I've been able to answer. In terms of the database, we're still looking at within this financial year. That's the digital platform the DG, Acting DG spoke about earlier on. Thank you very much, Chair. Oh, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, Honorable Smith, back to you. You uh, seem to yes. have. Thank um, you, Jake. Um, well, well, they were they were at least. Sorry, 
you're breaking up on my side now. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, well, we can hear you very well. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, um, at least the, the minister, you know, topped up a little bit because I was concerned in the beginning. Uh, but still, you know, with all due respect, Chair, you know, the answers I got was all very much theoretical uh, uh, things that's on paper, but the implementation is short. And um, as uh, you know, mentioned that uh, it's it's basically relied on the on the councillors to make sure that these things happen. It's like asking wolves to look after the sheep, you know, because a lot of these councillors are actually involved in in these wrongdoings and handing out uh, uh, houses, you know, uh, together with officials uh, to friends and and you know all these these type of illegal activities. So, Che, um, uh, I, I, it's not. I don't think I've got enough time to actually go into the the questions, but I think I should. I should follow up with some written questions on this, um, because I am really concerned about uh, you know the department um, having everything on paper, but but I didn't hear of actual action plans uh, to attend to any of these. Thank you, Che. All right, thank you very much. Uh, any comment, if any, from your side, Honorable Minister, based on what Honorable Smith has just No, I, I think, Chair, just to highlight, um, it's unfortunate that Honorable Smith feels that um, we, we're not really responding to his issues. Let me say this one. Um, I think non because Honorable Smith wanted to know if we do have norms or a, a framework that guides how we do work. And that's why she went on the norms and standards and the policies to say this is what everybody within the sector is expected to implement Chair, so Chair, uh, sorry uh, Chair, just mm -hmm. on the point of order mm -hmm. sorry Chair, please. No, please. my apology my apology Chair. i think okay. the minister maybe misunderstood my question my question wasn't whether the department have got standards i asked whether the different the nine provinces have got in, in terms of the, the minimum standards, in terms of, of checking on their side. I know the department and national, but at the provincial level, do they have actually implementation plan and policy at that level? Because there is where the problem lies. Yes, can, can we allow the minister first to respond if this ends? I would afford you more time. Uh, yeah, I think let's do that. Oh, okay, Honorable Minister, what you saw? No, about thanks. That? Honorable Smith, um, Provinces don't have powers by law to do policies. Policies are done by national. So norms and standards, directives in how implementation must be done is done at national. So out of the housing code, out of the policy, minister issues directive to say, this is how we are going to implement. What provinces responsibilities are, is that out of those, then they run in terms of projects, they are expected to comply with what National has issued. That's what I was trying to explain. So they do not develop their own policies. They do not develop their own guidelines. For example, the requirements of the solars, the requirement of this, it's done by us at National. Their responsibility is to implement. And then we come and evaluate, monitor, whether they are complying with what we have issued as directives, as policy and guidelines on how should be. I hope I've, I've, I'm clarifying the issue. And then in the gaps that you, we, where I agree with you, in terms of the implementation, it's that at that point where we do find issues, and that's why I talk about legacy issues, where you would have had projects in the past not done in the proper way. And for us to have reached to this point of ensuring as national that we put norms and standards, it was lessons learning that you go into this province, you find they're doing this, you go to this province, you find they're doing this, and to standardize. That's why we had to develop norms and standards and directives by minister to say they shall be doing the following in this manner. So that when we evaluate, when we monitor, we use one tool to evaluate them, to say you are not doing correctly, you are doing correctly. I hope I've been able to clarify that, but we could continue and engage. But I do acknowledge the challenges that Honorable Smith is raising uh, in the communities. I remember I was in that area at some point handing out title deeds um, in Mukhala 
And we know that when we dealt with the issues around the communities, there was one even community that the houses were built, but bulk infrastructure was not put in. And we had to come in and to say to the province, allocate the resources so that bulk can be put into these houses because you can't put people without bulk infrastructure. And those were things that as part of the lessons learned or previous legacies that we are correcting. Thank you very much, Honourable Member. Okay, thank you very much, Honourable Minister. What I like about what uh, Honourable Smith has said is that he will follow up some of the issues via written questions so that uh, you on yourself also be elaborate and clear um, as to how you respond to those questions, which is very, very, very good and welcome. Uh, the next one is Honorable Bali. I don't see on the platform she was there. Honorable Bali Gameni. It's like the EFF. Then you see them, then you don't. Okay. Honorable <laughs> uh, Mozama is listening. It, it, it's my turn now. Uh, and I hope that after this, no one will come back again. I should be the last one to, to ask questions. Firstly, Honorable Minister, let me appreciate and welcome your endeavor to ensure that all the appointments in the, in the boards uh, are finalized. I'm, I'm happy. I, I must say that in the previous years when we were interacting with this department, there were a lot of vacancies uh, in your boards, very, very strategic uh, boards that you uh, that fall under this ministry. And that was a major concern that we kept on raising. It's, all, it's good that uh, you have attended to, to that particular issue quite uh, decisively. And, and, and what we want to see is good governance, uh, principles of uh, good governance instilling those particular boards and that they do what is expected of them and fulfill their own mandates. This is quite important for, for me. But secondly, I, I had the possibility to look at the kind of appointments that, that you have made. I'm, I'm happy that uh, you also in your endeavors ensure that you prioritize the issue of women as chairpersons, as deputies, as well as senior executives within those particular boards. It's very, very good. And this is what uh, needs, needs to be done. What is also good for me is the fact that uh, some of them are young, aspirant, young women who are CEOs, CFOs, and all of that. Uh, in those particular boards. That is very, very good. Thirdly, I want to say that the issue that Salga has raised, I think you have appropriately responded to it. The issue that they want, that you review the status of municipalities becoming developers. At the moment, we have what I call a crisis in our municipalities ranging from political issues, governance issues, systems issues, financial management issues, basic service delivery. And it is not going to be appropriate to, to allocate more powers and functions in terms of accreditation, municipal accreditation to municipalities when they are facing that. Let them get their house in order. Let them clean it up. Let them ensure that everything is okay so that Housing delivery can be, if possible, based on their capacities, it can be allocated to those municipalities. As matters stand, I share your, 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 your views and concerns that you can't just do it when municipalities are in the state where, where they find themselves. This committee is dealing with municipalities every day and we are quite alive of what is happening in there. And I fully, fully support you. Now, now you raise an issue that I, I, I partly support, uh, the issue pertaining to the allocation formula. Yes, I agree that allocation of formula must be, must be changed so that it takes into consideration certain dynamics, whether it's population, whether it's need, whether it's the level of poverty and everything else in the respective provinces. And that's quite important to relook really at the 
allocation formula. It's a matter that is pending. It is overdue, and I think it must be given the necessary attention. And I'm happy that you are indicating that you are going to you are going to attend to that particular issue. But the issue that I that I have is with regard to allocations to provinces. When one province is not spending its budget, you take that money from that province, you allocate it to a best performer, a, a province that is performing. That is understandable from the look of things, but that doesn't eliminate the fact that that province that doesn't spend has not a housing problem. The housing problems remain. What I want to propose and what I want to see, and I want to hear your comment on that. I want to see a situation whereby those who are responsible for non-performance, they must face consequences. There must be a concomitant action taken against those who are not delivering, those who are not performing, those who are not achieving the mandates, those who are not ensuring that our people get houses. For me, it's not enough that you take money away from them because they are not spending and you are not going to take action against those who are underperforming. For me, that balancing act is very, very much important. Now coming to my questions, I have a few questions. Firstly, uh, I want to talk about the catalytic project uh, in Matosana. Uh, I saw you on TV last week uh, addressing this particular issue. That is where I come from, that is my city. I saw you attending to this particular issue on TV and you are attending it precisely because it was a matter that was raised by, by contractors and by the community at last, that the project has stalled. And, and because of the province doesn't pay, as it is alleged, it doesn't pay the, the, the contractors. And as a result of that, it has been a long time that a project uh, has started. And I'm aware that in 2021, just after you became the minister, you visited that particular project to check uh, what is happening in that project. But the following, Honorable Minister, there are a lot of issues about that project. Most of those issues have been covered quite extensively in, in the media. And I want to ask you whether is it possible to make an audit, I don't even want to call it a forensic audit, to just make an audit about the whole project what happened? What is the history of that project? Where are the fault lies? What went wrong? And why it is not achieving the intended purposes? To just fill in, Honorable Minister, that project started in 2015, and its target was, well, well, was for seven years. It meant to build about 9,500 units. It meant ranging from BNG houses, CRU, bonded housing, social housing, and so on and so forth. I can tell you, I'll be shocked if about 500 or at least 1,000 houses out of 9,500 houses were, were built. I, I doubt it. That is why I'm saying that it's quite important to make an audit of that particular project. That project amounted to 8.5 billion rands. It's quite important to check how much was spent and, and measure that against against the delivery that is on the ground. There are a lot of allegations, there are a lot of issues that are raised, and I think it's quite important that you must look at that particular project. And I sincerely request you to, to urgently do that. That project reminds me in, 19, in 20, 20, 2004, when I was part of the Portfolio Committee in the National Assembly, we visited a flagship program of the Alexander Renewal in 2004. And we highlighted all the issues that uh, were problematic. Even today, I'm sure people are still talking a lot about, 20 years later, are still talking about a project that started as a key flagship urban renewal project. And this particular project I'm referring to has got a lot of those particular challenges and it will leave a very, very bad legacy if it is not attended to. My, my plea is, and I want to hear what you've got to say about it, is that it needs to be attended to quite appropriately. 
and some audit where I don't know what kind of an investigation it has got to be undertaken so that you satisfy yourself that everything has been done according to the book, that all processes were followed and that all money allocated to the project were spent accordingly and the delivery is happening in terms of what was expected when the project itself was mooted. For me, that is very, very much important. And I really want to hear your comment and even in the proposal that, that I'm putting forward. The second issue pertains to a general problem that relates to the payment of contractors. Uh, it's a, where I come from, it's a big issue. And it's an issue as well, I know that throughout the country that there are unnecessary delays in respect of the payment of contractors and that delays the delivery of housing projects. I was listening to the acting DG reporting in terms of the target that you set and the achievements that were, were scored as a result of that. And part of the problem is that it's not, in some cases, not satisfactory, satisfying that those particular targets were not met. And part of what we pick up is that it is because it takes a very long time to pay contractors. And, and that particular matter needs to be attended to very, very urgently. And I want to hear your view on that in terms of facilitating the payment to contractors. And what is your department doing to ensure that at the end of the day, contractors are, are paid? Uh, the, the other one is the eradication of the asbestos, asbestos throughout. It's a very, very good program. In my view, it, is, it must be attended to. There was a stage many, many years ago where what is called a discount benefit scheme was, was unfolded by the department to ensure that uh, the asbestos are removed, especially from the previously uh, constructed houses under the dispensation of apartheid. That was well and good and it was supported, but I, I, where I live and in many other places, there remain the problem of asbestos houses. And I'm happy that it is part of your program, but maybe you must share with us in terms of how you are going to unfold the eradication of asbestos. At the end of the day, we do not want to see the problems that uh, arose uh, in the Free State province. Uh, we, know, we all know what happened in respect of that. We want to see things happening because asbestos are health hazards to our people and they need to be eradicated very, very quickly, as, as fast as possible within the limited means that, uh, that are available. Lastly, uh, Honourable uh, uh, honor Minister, the issue of the Bakugu uh, catalytic project. Uh, this project has been in the pipeline for many, many, many years. And I, I think it will be for the third time that I'm raising it. I raised it last year, I raised it to the previous minister, and I raise it now. Just as I was preparing for this meeting, I made inquiries about where the project is, what is happening, because it has an impact in terms of uh, the issues of delivery and the issue of, uh, of, uh, of the district development plan, as well as the special development zone of, of Bojanala. I had hoped and expected that uh, the project has been budgeted for this year so that it gets unfolded. It is a project that will have profound positive spin-offs for, for the area. As I was coming to this meeting, I'm told that even the construction of the, the refurbishment and the reconstruction of the airport cannot go on because of the problem of the bulk infrastructure. And it would seem that the department has not budgeted for this particular project and there are some delays. Maybe you could share with us what could be the problems with regard to that particular project. Uh, uh, in my interactions and as a member of parliament, I played a, a major role in terms of ensuring that this gets unfolded. I spoke to the, the champion of the DDM, Honorable Mantashe, uh, last year he launched it. He made it part of the project. He said, this is an important project. I had a discussion with the premier of the province. I had a discussion with the MMC, the previous one and the present one. And, and, and if there is anything that I feel that must unite the people of the Northwest, 
uh, irrespective of how they feel, how they think, how they live, and how they do things. Is is the Bakugu uh, precinct project in the in the Bojanala in the Bojanala district? And I sincerely requested that this particular project be 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 taken forward. Maybe from your side, you can then just share with us what is what are the constraints, what are the issues, so that uh, we we understand why. But my sincere hope and and request is that that particular project must be must be carried forward. It's an important project to Bakugu. Bakugu, the people of Bakugu have been swindled for many, many years. Hey, your 10 minutes has passed also. In terms of their, in terms of their, in terms of their was not. And, 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 and I thought that it is quite important to, to, to look at these particular issues from, from that point of view. I'm aware, uh, Honorable Smith, um, I apologize for that, but I thought perhaps I must also raise these particular issues uh, as such because they are very, very much important to me and to the department itself as we as we move forward. With that, Honorable Minister, over to you for some responses. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask um, colleagues uh, um, Lucy to answer on the payment of contractors, um, and then the issue of Matosan. I think it should be. Um, either Tepiso or Rashni, but the acting teacher will help as well. And then the issue of asbestos removal as well, and Bakubung Catility Project, I'll come at the end. Colleagues, please respond. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I will start with the payment of contractors. Um, Honorable Chairperson, what we are doing at Human Settlements, we are having the payment of contractors as a standing line item both at the technical minimum, which is the working group comprises of the HODs of all the provinces and the metros together with the national department, whereby we extract the information because we have got one system that we utilize that we call the HSS, the housing subsidy um, system. That's where the provinces are expected to capture their claims for all the projects to even load the annual budget and the claims per project. So what do we do when they process all the invoices, they load on that system. So on a monthly basis, we extract the information as a national department of human settlements. Then we get it in an Excel sheet. We forward it to the provinces to verify before we go and report to the political MINMEC because MINMEC also deals with it together with the MECs. And then what we came up with is if one, we agreed as a technical MINMEC that there must be consequence management for the HODs if they are found wanting. But we look at the reasons for the non-payment. So as a national department, we are taking into account every month we, we do that and then the HODs and then we report. Or um, next week we are going to midnight. We have already extracted that report. We have already discussed it with um, the provinces as a technical midnight. Then they're going to provide the reasons thereafter. And then what we agreed is if the HODs are found wanting, they are going to be consequence management. So we are taking into account and we are monitoring that on a monthly basis. I think I've covered um, that question, Minister. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister. Um, good morning, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, 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 Deputy Minister, and, and Honorable Members. Um, on the Alexandra Renewal Program, that has definitely been uh, a priority for the department. We have, uh, after our president visited the project, uh, I think about three years ago, um, we established the project management unit through our entity, the Housing Development Agency, which has been uh, very consistent in ensuring that the outstanding um, output on that project is being completed. Our focus there is the upgrading of informal settlements. Also, the hostels upgrading uh, is what we, we currently busy with. Um, and then, of course, the, the setting of title deeds. There's been a number of title deeds that have been outstanding there, uh, and, and that's what we are claiming to do. Overall, for that program, we've managed to develop the, the master plan or the development plan for the Greater Alexandria Development Area. It's also one of our declared priority development areas. Uh, we're working together with the province and the municipality or the metro city uh, of Johannesburg. Um, and we take into account a number of private sector developments in the area that is going to help to build the outstanding units um, in the greater Alexandria development area. 
their main aim is to both provide social housing in that area as well as affordable uh, housing um, and to de-densify the core of Alex, but of course to, to take into account what the community needs. Um, there's a there's quite a significant interaction and participation of the community uh, in the process uh, that the PMU is running. So on the Alexander, we will have prioritized that and there's a lot of um, attention given to that. Um, on the Matatana one, I think under the Let's People Respond, it is part of the Mining Towns program. We have found discrepancies in the way the funds have been spent, and it has been also um, elevated to a point that we also agree that we need to undertake an audit on that. But let me ask the people maybe to provide a little bit more details. Thank you, Minister. I think um, DDG Atkinson, you have covered the Marikana aspect because we're dealing with the discrepancies in terms of the program. And that is where we are currently. And there isn't much that we can provide on that. Thank you, Jay. Which one is that one? Is it the Bakubung one? On that one, what? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Who's responding? Non Tantla. Yes. There are specific uh, questions on Bakubung and Matrosana colleagues. It wasn't Alexander, it's Bakubung and Matrosana. Matrosana, I think we do have issues in terms of what has been allocated. We will have to go and maybe get the full reports around what is happening there. Uh, there is a request for accreditation, which I think they have spent money in line with what um, the plans were saying, I think two or three years back. Uh, it does require us to get a detailed report such that we are able to respond to it. Uh, Minister, I wanted to come in maybe and say something around Bakubo, given that it had a history of land claims in the past to say when we were putting together the catalytic project, uh, it is not uh, exactly part of the original list that we have. But given the, the planning needed to be done, I think it will require a full partnership with the municipality and the Department of uh, Rural Agriculture, Rural Development, such that we are able to address all the components that the chair has made a reference to in relation to uh, having um, a city that will have all those elements that he has mentioned. Uh, I'll stop there, Minister. Anything from your side, Ekin Then I'll I'm come covered. in. I'm covered, Minister. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Let me start with um, the issues around Matrosan. Um, there's been a lot of mistakes that has been happening and I do note what you are raising around just doing an audit. The first issue problem from us as national, we got involved and um, became part of the project team that led the project. But when you do an assessment as you are correct that I went to the site, I visited, I requested reports, at the time, there were several issues around, firstly, um, the contractor utilizing almost what people call criminals in the project, um, threats of sites being si uh, sold. We had to report some of these issues because there were issues around uh, service sites that were paid for by money of government being sold to public. That matter then was reported and the province needed to. In rectifying how the project is done, we did have a conversation initially with MEC um, uh, Lena Mecha, and then with MEC Maloy now, we agreed that the projects must be led by the province. That's the first thing. On the payment of service providers chair, what had happened there is that there were two issues um, around it. There's a scope of N12, but then, Adjacent to that, I think it's Ward 17, if I'm not mistaken, one of the wards, there was a planned project. Now, instead of the municipality, and, and unfortunately, 
even some of the transfers that were done initially by the province to the municipality Matrosana was done without the gazetting. So we had to raise this as a query. And I thought Lucy would speak to these issues because she should be aware of them. We had to raise it to as a query to say in this area, there are problems in terms of the gazetting is not done, the transfers was not done as per compliance with the DORA framework that was rectified. The other issue was that the contractor that was appointed for N12 Matrosana then was given another project and then it was encompassed into the Matrosana. That led to non-payment of the invoices chain. So the current issue that was around the non-payment was the encroach or the expansion of the scope of the contractor without following process. We agreed with the MEC that that needed to be attended to. And then we remove the extension of those contracts and request the contractor to remove the invoices of the extended work so that that can be dealt with separately and queried, but also be brought to the attention of the contractor that you can't be paid for something that you are not properly contracted for. But then the municipality and the province were going to deal with that. And then process these payments that relates to this. Now, Chair, this is not only the project that we had difficulties where the province was not being making payments. And I must say, it's not only the province, this province that we have a problem. We're finding a number of provinces and municipalities where service providers will do, and I've been raising it with the CFO and others. Um, you'd have, I have one issue in case of Janete Winnie, where a service provider says that I've done the work, this is paperwork and the matter is before court. Um, and then you find that um, even I think we had an incident with HDA as well um, to say a payment was not done. The service provider says I've done work, uh, but I've not been paid. And those things have been brought to my attention and I've been asking the team to deal with. Um, so the issue there then we said, let's pay what is supposed to be paid, including somewhere in Volmar Randstad where a contractor was done, did foundations, they had to leave site because um, they were not paid. Now, part of what we are going to have to fix as a system, uh, where it has gaps, working together perhaps with, with National Treasure, is that at times you have no reason why people are not paid. So a, a departmental official can just say when an invoice, because we are saying we're paying 30 days, when an invoice does not have a period. Then a junior official, because they are looking for a payback, a bribe, they don't pay and say we are lodging a query. So on Lucy's radar, then he sees the, this ones we are paying because they are not disputes. But when you start drilling deeper, you realize that these disputes are man-made disputes. They are destroying black companies. They're destroying women-owned companies. They're destroying young young people's companies. It's a reality that I'm not going to hide. It's something that we have to deal with sharply and strongly, Chair. But also when you talk about this catalytic projects as well, their nature, because they are multi-year, one of the things that we've got to do as the department is to start putting mechanisms in place to monitor. For example, we had Lufering, and I'll make it because I understand it uh, deep. We had Lufering as a catalytic project, identified, put in the plans, everything compliant to it. A change of leadership under Mashaba, mayor, decides that we are no longer going to put Lufering into this project because we are a different party. This project was started by another different party. Neither does the province nor national do anything in the process to protect that project. Um, and then for a year or two is hamstrung, given a project that has potential to produce 30,000 houses, is given a 30 million annually, which is not even going to shift anything. You can't even do bulk infrastructure. So it's those nature of things that as I talk about monitoring and evaluation and making sure that our systems are eff effective. And this is why as such to the team as well, we are going to have to review holistically how we do business plans so that we are able to monitor multi-year projects to say in this time, this is where it's supposed to be. Is it in the business plan? If it's not in the business plan, request an explanation from the province, from the metro to say, 
Why is this not in the business plan when it's supposed to be a multi-year and the amount of money allocated per annually supposed to be this way? And if we had done that way, Chair, as you explained with Matrosana, Matrosana would have been monitored properly, would have been implemented properly. And I do undertake that we'll do a level of detailed deep dive on other issues, but we've we do have a sense of some of the challenges that exist there and some of the areas that we've agreed with the MEC that we need to unlock so that the project can move. And we've said to them, as the province, because that's where the HSDT is sitting, they need to drive the department, their projects and they must take responsibility and accountability, not the national department. So that's that's what is happening with um, the Matlosana project. Um, and I touched on the issue around payment of, of, of contractors. We do need some level of mechanism chair to, to be able, because it's it's every month I do get somebody who says, I'll either go to court or we do have some of them who are lodging a dispute because they've not been paid. A, somebody just decides that we are not going to pay you. And because they know this are SMMEs, then when they go to court, they will spend a lot of money. And as government officials are using public funds, then they just track the cases. Uh, is postponed, they're not submitting, they're asking for uh, um, postponement uh, and all the extension and all those things. It's those cases of just typical corruption, if we may say that so, because people are refusing to pay bribes, they're being punished in the system. Um, on the issue of asbestos chair, I, I think the team has, has talked about this. We have made it a priority that will annually ensure that um, we remove this. Uh, free state, as much as it's got its challenge, we committed at that time with Premier Dombela that we will do. Um, I understand the commitment at that time as well with MEC Tukwana was that they are going to roll over. I do know that they to go out to get assistance in terms of this to implement. We've requested other provinces in, in Limpopo. We had about 1,500 in, in Sishoko, which were removed. Um, in Pumalangas, particularly in Tanzania, uh, we utilized the opportunity that was brought, and it's unfortunate. We had disasters there, and then we took that initiative to say in those disaster areas that we will remove those um, asbestos uh, in that whole area as part of responding to the disaster. So we had done that. So there's been quite a lot of progress in removing them. Other provinces are st still sluggish, as I say. In Western Cape, there was a dispute that we do not; they do not have um, asbestos check. And we do believe that they do. And we said we'll do send technical people. But we've got to understand that the removal of asbestos has to be done by people who are created to do so. So the process as well takes longer. But we've taken a decision that this is something that will remain on our radar, is planned for, and it's within our plans. Uh, Chair, I think I will definitely, uh, I'm taking note of the Bakubun catalytic project. Um, I, I will definitely look into it, zoom into it, see how best do we save him, save it. I must say there are quite a number of projects that you come across. Um, and then you learn that these projects have been announced either by the president, by the premier or somebody else, or it has it was sounded and communities were promised this. But when you look in terms of plans, either in the province or municipalities, you don't find those. This is one of the areas that we're trying to do. Part of why we wanted to go in terms of partnership of mega projects in various provinces was particularly to address this area of work so that we are able to say, okay, where government can't be able to do fully. We come partially as partnership, and that's what the request for proposal or request for info, request for proposals at the time for mega projects across the country was about. Unfortunately, we had to can the process um, and we're anticipating to start it, but we've got to have an agreement with at least the provinces in terms of its funding, how we're going to fund it, and therefore so that we can be able to proceed. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, uh, your, your responses were, were spot on and, and comprehensive, and I'm happy that uh, you are going to make some decisive interventions to, to, to attend to the issues which were raised. On all members, those were the questions and the interactions with uh, the minister and the team. Is there anyone who's got a question that if can, uh, can be asked tomorrow there will be a revolution of right-wingers? Anyone, or I'm just joking, 
anyone who feels strong, otherwise uh, the meeting has gone very well and the people have asked their questions. I've allowed members to very, very effectively and intensely ask questions. And all that means that that is what we want to do in this committee, that we need to have more time for members to ask questions. We allow them more time and more opportunity. Uh, that is what we must do. And at the end of the day, we understand clearly what is it that you are doing uh, and how you want to move some of these particular processes forward. And then and, and with that, because there's no other other, other other person who wants to ask, they are all satisfied and happy with our way forward. Any 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 word from you before we we, we adjourn the meeting on our minister or deputy minister? Maybe if DM has, then I can just conclude. Yes, yes. The DM, any your party shot? I don't, I don't want to sp spoil what the minister has already raised in this meeting, yeah. but let me first yeah. thank uh, the select committee for comments and guidance yeah. and advice. Uh, yeah. I, I think I've noted all these engagements uh, that are going to assist us to do the work. And, and, and also, you know, the, the, the minister said in the National um, uh, Assembly when we were presenting the APP, some of the questions are alerting us to do things differently. So I think all the questions that you are raising, that they will need us the, as the department to make thorough um, a, 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 a checkup or follow up of the, of the issues that you raised here and also of other uh, uh, members of, of, of the portfolio committee that are raising. And, and I think I want to thank everyone uh, and, and for, for, for everything that you are doing uh, for us. But lastly, we have also taken a resolution to prioritize uh, uh, the housing of each destitute, mainly elderly, childhood households, and persons with disabilities. It, I'm, I'm, I'm raising that because it's my, it's my delegation. When Mr. Uh, uh, Honorable Smith was talking about people that are given houses, selling houses. It's something that we're working on, uh, uh, Honorable Smith, uh, because they are given, most of them, happy letters that say you cannot sell this house um, until you finish eight years. So some of them, because they don't have, uh, we don't give them uh, really? uh, uh, title deeds so uh, immediately. So we feel that we are going to make a thorough checkup and a follow up of all the things that um, issues that are raised by honorable members. I want to thank you, Chair, and thank um, uh, everyone in the meeting and, and the minister. Thank you very much, Chair. From my side, Chair, thank you very much, honorable members, um, for the interaction. Um, as we commit every time um, to improve on our efficiency, and the quality of service um, that we provide to the people of this country. We'll definitely commit, um, submit to the reports that we have committed to doing um, so that it enhance um, the work of members of parliament. Uh, thank you very much for this engagement this afternoon, this morning. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of the committee to say that things have much, 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 1,000% improved from where, where we're coming from. When we started with, during this term, it was a bit difficult. It was not, it was not easy uh, in terms of working with, uh, with the department. And I'm sure all of this will be reflected quite comprehensively when we compose our, when we compose our, our, legacy, our legacy report. Just on a lighter note, I can even see Usi's uh, um, can speak, and that shows that things are cruising very well within the department. In the past, she would come, sit there for the whole time. I would ask, Sister Pam, are you okay? Anything? And she would just keep quiet, look at me. And then now, you know, I can see that you gel, you work together, you cooperate, you share responsibilities, you are able to respond to, to questions, and that 
clearly gives you a way and the direction that uh, things are, are okay. And, and that the stability that we see in the entities is very crucial because these entities are very, very much important. If they operate effectively, they can make wonders and turn things around uh, for the people of this country in terms of housing. With that, once more, thank you very much. We will consider your P APP as well as your budget and then uh, decide what to do as as I think within the next few weeks or so, we will be debating uh, this particular uh, uh, vote in, uh, in, in the plenary. With that, thank you very much, Honorable Minister, once more, and Deputy Minister and the team, uh, that this meeting is adjourned. Chair, thank you very Chair, much. Before we, yes. before we adjourn, if the members can just stay behind. Okay. Um, I've got a question uh, that's, that's only for the committee. Okay, fine, no problem. Can we just quickly do that? As, uh, thank the you very much. The minister locks out. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Can uh, the people lock out? Uh, who else? Oh, Baba, how dare you are here? I didn't see you. Anyone who's not part of this committee is free to lock out. Moss, can you help us? And just select people who are not part of the committee. Yes, yes, I can you remind just remind who's Kalelwa Makasi. I also see a gadget of a person portfolio committee on public works. Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. Before I also have a matter that I want to raise. Uh, before that, let, let's allow Honorable Smith to, um, to raise an issue. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I, I want to just quickly talk about our uh, planned um, study tour. And uh, as mentioned yesterday, the conflict it has with the with our uh, um, debate on, on human settlement. So I just want to get some clarity around that, that specific aspect uh, no, because we, it is concerning we, me as you yeah. We have arranged, I've I was asked the same question. I indicated that we, on that day, I think it's the 18th, if I'm not mistaken, I'll verify the date. Uh, on that day, we will request about three to four hours uh, when we are at that side to just ensure that we debate. Because it is it is important, we will debate. It does, it does make any difference. Whether you are in South Africa or you are abroad, you will still be logging, logging into debate. Is that okay? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. okay. Now, I just wanted clarity on that. Yeah, that no, there's okay. no confusion around okay. that specific aspect. Thank you, the, Chair. The Chair of Chairs asked me. Uh, I had to address that before they, 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 they approve. And to my knowledge, this has been approved. And they a process that MOSS is unfolding to facilitate uh, for, 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 for members. And next week, Tuesday, we, we're meeting in Cape Town, the 9th, it is physical. Uh, it will be uh, water and, and sanitation. I just wanted to remind honorable members for us. Thank you very much. All the best. Have a nice, lovely weekend. The meetings. Moss, we're listening to you. Yes, uh, thank you, Honorable Smith. I just wanted to provide an update to say the application is now in the office of the Chief Whip. There's a process on our members. After the Chief Whip, it will go to the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. But we're hoping that very soon we'll get you know, responses from the, three, the two outstanding offices. Thank you, Honorable Smith.
will now be the chairperson. Can we start yeah. with the next meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Bye.